Hello students and welcome to another lecture in our C Sharp Fundamental course. In the last few weeks we have practiced a lot uh, about dynamic data structures. We have learned how to build stacks, we have learned how to build queues, we have learned how to build lists, we talked a lot about C Sharp object references, null values and so on. And next week you have your upcoming written exam. So I promised you to put together an additional example that you can use in the upcoming week to uh, further practice your uh, C Sharp coding skills, especially with regards to dynamic data structure. And this is exactly what I did. I thought it would be a lot of fun if we would build a small little game where you can add your dynamic data structure and then once you're done you can play the game. Let me show you the game that you are going, uh, going to build in this exercise. Here you see the game, let me remove the browser tab and so on, here you see the game. As you can see here our game consists of multiple stacks. These are the stacks you have some sweets inside of these stacks and your goal is to order to sort these sweets so that every column every stack only contains one kind of sweet so in this case we for instance once for instance want to have all the cookies these one then in for instance this stack here it didn't de doesn't depend on which stack you use you just have to put every type of cookie in one stack. Now we don't have just stacks but we also as you can see here have multiple of these stacks. So we have in this direction a list of stacks. So what we essentially have is stack 1, stack 2, stack 3 and all these stacks are then maintained in a list. Let me show you how the game works and then I'm pretty sure you understand what I mean. Now, how can we bring all the cookies in one a column, for instance? Let's take these lollipops here. Let's take this one out. I mark this one. And then in red, I can choose where I want to put it. I want to put it here. And as you can see, it took the lowest suite and took it from here and moved it to here. Now, this is full. I cannot put any more suites here in this stack. So let's take this one and put it here. Now, we have two lollipops in this area. Good. Let's take this suite, put it here. 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 And now we already have all our lollipops in a single column. Now let's take these mm, sweet triangles or whatever it is and try to put them in a single column. So we have to move this, I think it's a popsicle ice, I don't know. Let's put this here, let's put this here, let's put this one here, let's put that here, let's put that here. And we have finished another column as you can see here. Now let's take this one, put it here uh, and try to continue. Let's get rid of that one, let's get rid of that one, let's move that one here. And we have another, uh, another column, another stack sorted here. Now let's take this cookie here. Let's put this one here, let's put this one here, let's take this cookie here. Very nice. The only thing that is now a problem is this one and this one. Now let's take this one here, give this one here, uh, put this one here, take this one here, and now we sort these lollipops here and let's see, last one. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I made it. Did you see the confetti fly? Do you see that we need 26 moves? Now that is exactly the game. And as you can see, this game only works if you have these stacks here, if you have a list of these stacks, otherwise the data of the game cannot be maintained and that's your job. Now, let me quickly give you a few tips about this game. Um, this game, uh, once you run it locally, it will not run there. It will run at HTTP localhost some port. You can specify the number of rows and number of columns you want to have in the query string. So, for instance, let, let's make the game a little more challenging. Let's add one additional row and let's make a lot of columns. And as you can see, now the game is more difficult. It's much more difficult be because you have more suites to shuffle around in order to sort them into the different columns. Trust me, all the exercises, all the games can be solved. So if you are struggling, you are simply not trying hard enough.
Now, if you would like to challenge a colleague, a friend, for instance, you can try to solve this one and note the number of moves that you needed to solve this quiz, for instance. Now, on the right lower side, down here, very small, you see the so-called seed value. You can take the seed value, I will simply copy it into the clipboard, and you can add this seed value here to the URL, see? And then you can send this URL to your friend. And that makes sure that ensures that your friend gets exactly the right puzzle. So the seed value is similar to a seed value that you might know from games like Minecraft, where you can make sure that everybody has the same landscape, the same blocks in your world. In our case, it's the same suites arranged in the exactly same order. So this is the game, this is what we want to build. Now, what is your task? Let me switch to the code view here. This is the exercise that you get from me. And if you ask yourselves, okay, where will I get this exercise from? Let me show you that. Um, you will get it from here. This is your classroom link. Let me zoom in so you see it pretty clearly. I will also add it to the description of this video and I sent you this link already via Discord. So you have to accept this classroom here and then when you do that, you will get this project structure here. The important project for you is this one here. This is where you write code. The red one here that I mark here, this is the browser game. This is what I have written for you. It's also written in C Sharp. It's written with a platform which is called Blazor, which makes it super easy to write web applications using C Sharp. You do not need to write this code as we haven't covered Blazor in our course yet. However, if you are, if you are uh, curious and you want to know how this works, feel free to take a look, uh, take a look in this code. I'm pretty sure you will understand it because you already learned the basics of HTML, CSS and so on. And maybe you can figure out how it works. However, the project consists of a third part. Let me mark that one in yellow. It's this one. It's the automated unit tests. And I will show you in a second what this is. So far, we always tried, we, we, we tested our code manually in a console app. This time, I would like to introduce you for the first time to automated tests. Automated tests are awesome because they save you such a large amount of time because you do not need to type in test cases manually. All the test cases run automatically and once all the tests are green, are successful, you know that your code is correct. And this is exactly what I did in this exercise. So let me guide you through the code that you have to write. First, let me show you how you can work with this project. I open the project up here in Visual Studio Code. And if you'd like to build everything in the usual way, you simply run .NET Build. That will compile everything, the web application, your code, the test code. And as you see, when you get the assignment, everything is fine. Zero warnings, zero errors. Perfect. However, when you take a look into the code here, you will see that this code contains a lot of to do, to do, to do items. The methods here, they only throw an exception, not implemented exception, because they are no, not implemented yet. So this is exactly your task. You have to first implement the stack as defined in this method. Every, sorry, file. Every method contains a detailed description what the method should do in its documentation header. So take the stack.cs file and try to implement the stack. Make yourself familiar with the existing code and then work through the different methods, constructors and so on and add the necessary code. Yes, of course you are allowed to add new properties like that. You are allowed to add helper methods if you want. You are allowed to add additional classes, although you don't need them. Uh, it, uh, you, uh, the classes are complete. You only need to write the methods as you can see them here. Now, 
once you have implemented a method or two or three, whatever, you can now use the automated tests, which are completed. You do not need to change them. You can use these automated tests to verify your code. Let me show you how this looks like. Inside of the project, you can run .NET test and then lean back and let the system automatically test your code. And as you can see, a lot of errors appear here. Well, the reason is kind of obvious. The methods are not yet implemented. Let me show you your goal. I have here the ready-made solution. This is the one that is completed. And if I run .NET, oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong folder here. Now I'm in the correct folder. This is the one with the complete solution. If you run .NET test here, when you are done, when everything is fine, you should see the following output. It builds successfully and you will see in green past 13 tests green. That is exactly what you want. If you want to have a more graphical feedback, what's going on with your tests, you can simply click on the test explorer here you see the dotnet test explorer i added the link to this um, extension to the readme file and you can simply run the tests here click and those tests will run you see they are running and in the completed solution i should see a lot of green checks well if you do the same see you have the green checks here if you do the same in your incomplete solution, you run it again and you will see it runs, it runs and runs. And in a few seconds, we should see a lot of red X's because this method, these methods are not implemented yet. So this is your exercise. Go to the stack, implement the stack. Go to the list, implement the list. Repeat that until all your unit tests are green. And once your unit tests are green, you can try the game. Now, how do you run the game locally on your computer? Let me show you that in the completed solution. You simply go into the root folder and you say, just like with any other console app too, .NET run dash dash project Christmas queue, because that is the name of the uh, browser project. You run it. It will start just like any other console app too. Just wait a second and see, here you get a URL. The concrete URL might differ from computer to computer, but you should get a URL. And if you click on this URL, you will see here in there, you will see your game running in localhost. And now you can start playing your game. I will zoom out a little bit to have it, uh, have it like here and you see, it works perfectly fine. So this is exactly what you should see once all your collections are implemented correctly. I hope you will have a lot of fun working in on this exercise. As I told you, this is the, let me show you the, the, the thing. This is the classroom link. This classroom link will show you, let me see, will show you this readme file. And here in this readme file, you can reread all the things that I just showed you. And you can find all the links. You can see a description of your task. You see all the different commands that I just shown you, that I've just shown you in this video. So I think the readme file should be pretty self-explanatory. If you have any problems with this exercise, please don't hesitate to contact me, for instance, via Discord or via email. I wish you a nice rest of this weekend. I wish you a lot of fun and a success with this game. And I hope you will have as much fun working on the dynamic data structures as I had putting together this exercise. Bye, see you in class.